You're listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and this is the podcast where you will get expert advice about the heavy duty parts you buy and keep you informed about what's happening in the industry. This episode is sponsored by TruckPartsInventory.com. Lowering costs per mile is all about finding the right part quickly. At TruckPartsInventory.com, you will save time by searching inventory from around North America in one place. You will save money by having the option of buying new, used, or aftermarket parts. You'll save yourself work by sending a parts request and having companies contact you. TruckPartsInventory.com is easy to use and it's free. Go to TruckPartsInventory.com today. On March 9th, 2020, we aired episode 35, where I interviewed John and Buck from the Independent Truck Repair Group, also known as ITRG. That interview was recorded a few weeks before, and at that time, we really had no idea what was coming. COVID-19 has changed the world since then, and today we're going to speak to John and Buck again, and they are going to share with us a report on the impact this pandemic has had on independent repair shops. And we're going to talk about the steps their group has taken to provide support for the essential heavy-duty repair technicians who keep trucks and trailers that are loaded with the necessities of life rolling down the road. John Buck, welcome back on the Heavy-Duty Parts Report. Thanks, Jamie. Great to be back. So what has been the impact of COVID-19 on independent repair shops? Buck, I'd like to hear your perspective since you run a repair shop. Well, by the census, there is a few shops that are actually busy, uh, but the most of them, majority of them, they are. They, they took a pretty good impact. Um, the uh, the work will be spotty. They'll get a little bit of a lot of work, and then they'll just be dead for a while. But uh, you know, we've been trying to make the best of it. Now's the time to go ahead and fix your shop, get prepared, because we are going to get busy when this is over with. We're going to get slammed, and we need to be ready for it. So, trying to fix all the equipment and different things. That's what we're doing. John, from your perspective on running a business, having volatility in your cash flow is a real challenge. I'm sure that this is putting a lot of pressure on the, the owners of these repair shops. It is, and we've seen it, and Buck hit some good points there. Uh, <clears throat> on average, uh, we're seeing our shops down as much as 30, 35% on average. Um, we've also noticed a lot of the repair shops have lowered their labor rates just to kind of keep things competitive. Uh, they've kind of moved into different venues we've seen in the last couple of months. You know, our guys are entrepreneurs. So when things like this happen, they're tough, they're resilient, and they can get into things very quickly. Uh, trailer pairs have kind of kicked up a little bit. So they're doing everything they can to keep the shops filled, keep their guys active. Um, um, but they've been doing a great job. And I, I really personally think that it's almost like it, there's a – there's there's hands on top of it and it's ready to explode a little bit and I think that the, I think we'll bounce back I'm not sure how quick it'll be but I think things will bounce back pretty quick we hope. When I look at that situation of having the double impact of you know 35 percent down in volume and then having to cut your rates and that's going to impact cash. Mm -hmm. You you talk about the rebound and and some people say maybe it's going to be a V shape. I think others are more leaning towards that U shape where we're going to be flat for a bit and then it's going to really really head up. Buck, from your perspective, trying to protect your employees has got to be a priority. How are you doing that? Well, we're not just tech, uh, protecting our uh, employees and stuff like that. We want to protect our clients that come in here as well. So we're doing every step, uh, what everybody else is doing. Uh, we're doing social distancing. Um, there's, we clean once a night. Uh, we have someone come through and do some cleaning. Um, we're using gloves, all the personal protection equipment. And uh, we're just trying to be preventive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you're absolutely right. We have to. We, it's not just about the employees; it's also about the customers. I think if everybody, you know, works together and and follows the the practical guidelines that's been laid out, we have a chance of at least minimizing the risk. Have you had any employees who have said like they're not they're not comfortable coming to work or any situation like that? There has been other reports of other shops that had that problem and different things. Um, I've got a pretty good culture. We got a pretty good group. Um, you know, independent trucks, uh, mechanics and stuff like us, we just, 
we're not, we're fearless. We're going to go after it. We'll stay here. We're going to go, you know, we're going to deal with it. So nobody's left me. Nobody's done anything different. We're, we're still doing business the same way with that. Yeah, I second that. We are a resilient group. John, I've heard reports that field inventories have been depleted because of supply <laughs> chain issues. Is there, have you seen that in your group where they're having a challenge to get the parts that they need? We've seen a little bit. Uh, I, was, I was actually on a call a couple of weeks ago um, and uh, it had a number of different suppliers that were on there kind of talk about what's going on. A number of our suppliers are not building or making materials today. A lot of times their distribution centers are open right now. Um, so they are shipping product. Our concern is, at least what we're seeing, is that things are, inventory is okay right now. I think there'll be a little bit of a lull July, August, because they're not making as much inventory. You said U-shape. We're thinking W, where it's kind of gone down. It'll go up, go down again. I think we'll see another spike. Um, I can tell you with our national parts program and who we work with on the PDC side and Fleet Pride that uh, there's good inventory levels there, uh, certainly on the wheel end side, so we feel very comfortable there. Um, where it goes back to is not necessarily the suppliers not being able to work, but it's also bringing the inventory to steel products. Typically, a lot of the suppliers out there that build product are using the same type of tempered steel. So there's a little bit of a shortage. Things are offshore when they come back in. So we think there's going to be a little bit of a lull there, but um, I think the actions that they're taking, hopefully, We'll, we'll maintain that inventory so we're not seeing um, our guys having access to parts in, in the summertime. Yeah, we're not suggesting that the repair shop should go out there and do what everybody did with toilet paper and start hoarding <laughs> mass amounts of parts. That being said, downturns are an opportunity for geometric growth. And if you have the financial capacity, negotiating with suppliers right now could be a very, very profitable thing for you to do as recovery happens. Buck, from your perspective, is that a strategy you've entertained? Yeah, we're doing it right now. We're doing it with uh, the ITRG side of it and stuff like that. So, yes, yes. Uh, and being proactive during this time is, is the best way to do it. Stay on top of things and try to find a better pricing and try to make sure your inventory is stocked up and stuff because you're going to spend a little money now, but you'll get it back. And like you said, John, he's thinking it's the W. I kind of agree with him. I think it's going to happen. You got to be ready for it. When I was running my contracting business, uh, I, I definitely took advantage of this strategy. And I often recommend when I'm coaching business owners to think about these downturns if they are in a position to take advantage of it. So for example, right now there may be a competitor that is at an age where they want to retire. So it's not a predatory thing. They just want out and they say, you know, after this pandemic, it's just, I'm done. Capitalizing on that, you know, getting access to, uh, tools, their their website, their their phone number, their email list, um, their employees. That could be a very, very good <coughs> strategy. John, from your perspective, has any of your group kind of gone down that road or have you seen an opportunity for actual growth? Because I don't want to just talk about how bad everything is. That's a great question. I, actual growth is one thing uh, taking advantage of the space and i'm not suggesting that's what you're saying but yeah there's an opportunity for growth what we did is a little bit different um buck and i as business partners and he being in the industry we basically sat back and said look we've got some guys in pain we're down 30 35 percent we have a terrific networking group where we're offering a national products program we have our tech talk which is 24 7 live technicians so if you have an issue you're underneath the truck you might have let two or three people go, especially key technicians, but you need a place to, a resource to call them and find out what's going on. You can do that. Uh, we have our consulting piece, very, very good. And on top of that, um, we've got our online training, which you can now become a member. You have access to online training. So now your guys can train via an app or go online, use ID password and get their training. So what we did is said, look, we know people are in pain. We now are offering free membership into our network through August. So we're deferring that. Come on in, join us, take the ride with us, enjoy the experience. If you don't like it after August, no, no hard feelings. Um, but, and then you can continue with us. We're also offering uh, free months of uh, Tech Talk, a free month of some online training to let your guys experience that, that solution. And, and online training is in 16 major areas 
of the truck. Two, two of the very important areas are electrical and, uh, and def. Uh, so we're offering that. So that's what we're trying to use. Hey, people are down a little bit. You may not be up as much. You need some resources to use. Use our network right now. We're just going to defer things on the road. That means an investment from our board of advisors. Basically, let's invest into this. People are down. Let's let's pro still provide the services we think are very important to them, the tools that they can use, plus the networking. Quite frankly, it's nice to have all these guys kind of talk together. And when you become a member, you have access to uh, who these guys are, who the owners are, their telephone numbers, and call them, find out what they're doing. So it's a great way to network, but we took immediate action on that. And, and once the things happen, within a few weeks, we were in line. So that means within a few weeks of this happening, we had our online training ready to go and our tech doc ready to go. We did that within two or three weeks, and it's very dynamic. That's excellent. And, and really that coming together and supporting one another is exactly, you know, there, it's one thing to take advantage of a business opportunity that's presented by whatever circumstance. It's another thing to take advantage of people. And we are not about that. So totally I great. love hearing how the ITRG has come together to really do what its mission is, which is to support the independent uh, repair truck shop owner, trailer owner. So yeah, that, that's really great to hear. Uh, Buck, from your perspective, have you had some feedback from some of your fellow owners about uh, how they've enjoyed taking advantage of some of those things that are now available through August for free? Yeah, it's really helped them out because they have to come into the shop and they have to work on their business. So they're trying to change things around. So they're working on that. And then the tech might have a question or something like that. And of course, they're always going to the owner. Well, now they can go to Tech Talk and uh, get that and get that information. So they're not having to worry about the back. He can work on working on his business and it, and it just really, really helps all the way around. So it's been good for me. and It's been good for other people as well. Excellent. That's a good point. Oh, sorry, Jamie. Yeah, no, that's that okay. Good, very, very quick on the tech talk. Page. Well, it's really neat too. You might be using a gel test, a JPro, a, a, you know, a number of different tools. Um, we have access to that too. So if a guy is underneath the truck, our guy that's 24 seven can actually see what he's seeing when they're a part of the experience. So he might say, Hey, I've got an issue with this. It's an air dryer, whatever it might be. And they can see what he's seeing while he's underneath the truck at two in the morning or two in the afternoon. He can call 24 seven. And that's a real advantage that we have, and, and, and our guys have really taken advantage of it. Buck's done a great job of, of, of supporting that. His team uses it along with some other members that have come in. They really like that, that resource. And remember, it's a resource. If you're letting a few guys go, you now have a resource to go to. Yeah, and that's the problem, right? If you if you do have to let a couple of people go, or people are sick, or they're they're unable to come into work right now, you're down you're down across the board. So you've got to maximize what uh, you've got available. So back in episode thirty five, we kind of did an overview of what ITRG provides its members. But for those, you know, our audience is growing all the time. For those that are listening today that perhaps haven't had a chance to go back and listen to episode thirty five, could you just go from the top? and tell us about exactly what ITRG offers its members. Well, uh, ITRG was founded, be, quite frankly, it was, it was Buck and I getting together a couple years ago and the independents didn't have a place to go to. They were competing against the, the dealer networks. They were part of a franchise, they are part of a network. Typically, if you're an entrepreneur, you own your shop in a market, you're kind of by yourself a little bit and you don't have access to a lot of things that we get into. So the things we in, but that were, I think were terrific at is training number one. I think we have the best electrical training and deaf training in the industry. We trained over 450 technicians in 2019. Uh, just as a side note, we had a meeting that's come up in Cincinnati in May. We now moved it and one of our guys on the West Coast said, hey, is there a way I could have that guy come in? We're a little bit down too, but I still wanna train our guys and we're actually going in to train 17 technicians with the electrical piece. But we also wanna provide them not only the training, access to instructor training, but then online training. The second thing is you now have access to the tech talk. So you have a per person that is not in your shop, but it's a dotted line to another resource that you can have utilization to. Online training, obviously. Um, along with our national parts program, which has been terrific. You can now have access to over 500 plus product lines, an inventory of over three and a half million dollars, five locations, regional distribution centers that can support you anywhere in the US. So when you order today, you can get it tomorrow or the following day, the second day. 
prepaid freight minimums are terrific and you get a rebate behind it. So the acquisition price is not only very good, you can mix and match any of the components and then you get a rebate on top of it. You now have an entity that's providing you the resources that you as an independent shop is looking for. We're fighting on your behalf. And our tagline is, who are we? We're you. And so, and it's gonna continue. We'll ultimately get into uh, employee benefits from the standpoint of insurance, either from the business side or, or, or the health side. And, um, and that's really big. So it's consolidating our efforts and providing ways to improve or reduce your overall cost of your company. That's what we're into. So if I can reduce your overall cost by 15 or 20%, awesome. If you can utilize our parts, our national parts program, I mean, think about this. If you're mixing and matching and I can reduce your inventory, let's just use 10% and you have a million dollars worth of inventory, it's $100,000 into your bottom line within 60 days. That's what we're trying to get into. So we're, and it, it continues, we never stop. The road's always under construction. So we continue to build that to provide the value and the value added services to the independent side. And Buck, as a as an actual repair shop owner and operator yourself, I remember in episode 35, one of the things you really appreciated was the help that you got in systemizing your business on the operations side. So could you talk a little bit about that and how members benefit? Systemizing? You get more detail on that, would you, Jane? What you're looking for on that? Yeah, we well in episode 35, I remember we talked about how you uh, really appreciated being able to get your business to a place where you could actually leave the shop and things kept running because you had put systems in place. And part of that was a uh, an effort that came from ITRG working with its members to give them the consulting and give them the the you know, training on how to do that with their business. Because it's one thing to know how to be a technician. It's another thing to know how to run a shop that provides technical repairs. Thank you. Um, sometimes I'll get off track and different things like that. So uh, that ITRG really helped on that part of it because, like I said, it was able to keep me as the owner in behind the desk doing the job that I need to do. They're out there doing their either the tech talk, they're doing training, they're doing things like that. Um, also, we're networking. We've got consulting inside this thing. So we're talking to other truck shop owners and we're having meetings once a week and we're talking about this and uh, the payroll protection plan. You know, I, I'm going to tell you right now, if I didn't belong to this group, I uh, I probably wouldn't have been able to file for it. You start sitting down, you start doing it, you get frustrated, you leave, somebody calls you off, you never get the job done. With the group and the way everything's going and the way ITRG helps us, I'm able to take the time out. We work as a group, we got the payroll protection plan and it worked really good. So that helped us out. So it's giving you time to, to breathe and uh, and you're comfortable because you're not the only one in the trenches. You got everybody else in the trenches with you. And, and as long as you got that, it, it just feels good because, well, it's just you're with everybody else and we're going to get through it together. You're not by yourself anymore. Well, gentlemen, I, I salute your efforts to support our great industry and our independent uh, repair shops. If there's one thing you'd like people to take away from today's conversation, John, what's that one thing? Um, the biggest thing is, is that we're here for you. We have a number of resources that you can use. Uh, yes, our, yes uh, we're down a little bit. Our industry's down where everyone's shut down. People are, are being held in, in their houses. They have to stay in, it's in quarantine. Uh, you're frustrated. You don't know where the market's going to be, where our, our new revenue is going to come through, is it going to pick up. Just know that we're here and we know it's going to, we will, it will pick up. You have a resource to use. We have resources internally. You have resources with us, uh, with a buck and a number of our members that you can phone call because they're fighting the same thing you are. You're not alone. And that's the biggest thing we want to take from this. And, and Buck, you know, when this episode actually airs, uh, right now as we're recording it, things are opening up and uh, we're going to see how that goes. So as a business owner, when you look over the next 30 days, what is it that you're kind of thinking about right now and what parting words of wisdom would you share with anyone listening? I'd say get ready. I'd say this is going to be over with and it's going to hit, it's going to hit hard. And you need to be ready. You need to be ready. You need your text train. You need, you need the shop cleaned up. Anything that needs repaired, go ahead and get it repaired because you're going to be slammed and you don't need to be chasing your tail because you wasn't ready. Be prepared. It's coming. 
You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we've been speaking with John and Buck from the Independent Truck Repair Group, also known as ITRG. To learn more, go to indtrg.com. That's indtrg.com. Links are in the show notes. John, Buck, thank you for sharing your update and coming back on the Heavy Duty Parts Report. Thanks, Jamie. Have you subscribed to the podcast yet? Go to heavydutypartsreport.com today to subscribe to the podcast. And don't forget to give us a five-star rating and review on the podcast player of your choice. I'd like to remind everyone to focus on cost per mile over purchase price and <coughs> let's keep those trucks and trailers rolling. You can watch our next video and don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel.